Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from LeetCode called Number of Islands. It's a medium. Let's get started. Given an m by n 2D grid map of ones which represent land and zeros which represent water, return the number of islands. So an island is surrounded by water and is formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically. So top, bottom, left to right. You may assume all four edges of the grid are all surrounded by water. So example one, we can assume that this entire grid has an additional padding of zeros around it and we can only connect on the rows or the columns, no diagonals. So here we have ones like going where my mouse is right here. So this is one island right here, surrounded by all the zeros, which is water. Example two, we have one block of ones right here. So island number one, island number two is over here, and island number three is here. So one, this block of four, two, and three. These are diagonal to each other, but diagonals don't count, so we output three. So let's look at that last example one more time. And this should be ones going across. This looks right. So essentially what we want to do is iterate through our entire grid and see the blocks of ones we have. So here, once we are starting on index zero, zero, we wanna see what ones connect to this one. So we set, um, so we search top, bottom, left, and right, right? So we'll come across these four and we want them to be marked as seen. So what we can do is mark them as zeros once we see them. So now they've become water, to the rest of the island since that's what they are. They are not connected and they are irrelevant. Now over here, this one is surrounded all by zeros. So this is another island, island number two, mark this as seen. And once we get over here, we explore the top left, bottom right to see anything that's connected to this piece of land. We have another one right here. So this is island number three, also marked as zeros. And that's essentially what we wanna do, right? So we want to do a DFS once we hit a one to explore all the ones surrounding it, mark it as seen, increment the number of island count and continue iterating. I'm going to start writing the code and as we write it, we can explore how this works in more depth. So number of islands, let's move this out of our way. So first we want islands to be zero. That's what we're initializing it with. And we want to iterate through our 2D grid. So four are in range length of grid. For C in range length of grid of R. So what we're doing here is for each row and then for each row C, so for each column. So we're going to loop through this way, left to right, top to bottom. And if this index that we are on, so grid of R, C equals one, it is a piece of land. We now trigger our DFS search. So we'll have a helper and call it DFS. Let's pass in grid R, C, so our current index. And what this is going to do is explore all of the land connected to ours, make it one island, mark it as seen, and once that is done, all we have to do is increment our islands count count by one. So islands plus equals one. After we are done looping through everything, all we have to do is return islands. So also this should be DFS, not def. Um, okay, so now we want a helper function called depth for search. So let's write that. This is going to be taking in a grid, a row index, and a column index. And what did we talk about, right? We want to mark everything as seen. So immediately, as soon as we are in here, we want to mark our current index as zero. So grid of R C equals zero. And now we want to explore 
whatever's connected. So that is horizontally or vertically. So let's make a list. Exploring top, so row minus one, C. Bottom, row plus one, C. Left, so row column minus one. And right, row column plus one. So for each position, we will make a DFS check. So for row column in LST. And what this does is has our minus one or whatever that first index is saved as row in our for loop and the second index right here as column. So as we iterate through, the first check we wanna make is make sure that we are within range of this grid. So if row greater than equal to zero and column greater than equal to zero and row less than length of our grid, we don't wanna go over and column less than len of grid of row. So now we are in our bounds of our 2D grid. We also wanna make sure that the next land we are exploring is also a one, not a zero. So, and grid of row column equals one. In this case, what we do is call DFS again on the new row column. So how is this working? Let's run an example. We start with zero, zero. Um, we have islands equaling zero. And as we iterate, the first thing we iterate is this first index, zero, zero. We see it is a one, so we trigger our DFS. So now we are in DFS with this grid, row zero, column zero. We mark it with a zero. And now we want to explore for this index right here, top, bottom, left, and right, right? Everything in this list right here. So as we loop through, the first place we loop through is our top. We see that it is not in range, so it's, r minus one so this is negative one zero which does not fit our if condition so we finish exit out of this if condition go into the next row column in the list which will be the bottom so this is index one zero which is a one and it fits this if condition so we now call dfs on one zero notice how we never actually finished zero zero it's still in our stack waiting for one zero to finish so we can pop off that before finishing zero zero. So now for one zero, we wanna mark it as a zero and do the same thing, explore its top. But since we had already marked it as zero, we're good and don't need to double visit something we've already done. So we finished top, now we explore its bottom, which is also zero, so we finished bottom. Now we want to check horizontally. So first we check left, which is out of range. So we exit again out of that if back into the for loop to now check right. So on our right check, we see that yes, it is a one, it fits the if condition and we call DFS again on now one one. And we still have not finished this one zero call yet. So now for one one, we mark it as zero. We do the same thing again, we check top. But before we finish top, we see that it matches the if condition and we call DFS again. So now we are at zero comma one, marking this as zero. Check its top, out of range, bottom is zero, left, zero, right, zero. So now we've exited this for loop, we can return, so we pop this off. And now we finish checking the top for this index right here. Now we want to continue through, check bottom, left, right, which they are also zero. So we finish this index and can now pop off. Now that we've finished this, we go back to what we had called this from, which was one zero right here. We have finished right and there's no more, um, there's no more, nothing else to check. So we pop off from here. Zero, zero, we just finished the bottom. Now we finish checking left, right. 
Left is out of bounds, right is zero, so we can finish that and now return. So once we return back into num islands, we increment island count by one. So we had zero, so islands now equals one, and we continue looping through. So this means that for our scene range, we started zero, zero, we now go to zero, one. It's zero, so we just continue through until we see this island right here. Do the same thing, increment islands, so now we have two. This has been zero. As we continue looping through, we finally get to this last chunk of land. We perform DFS on it again. We would have marked these as zero, have islands equaling three, and finally returning. So let's run this code. Long answer, output 20, expected one. Let's see. Are we not marking something correctly? We have grid RC equaling zero. Okay, number of islands should only increase once we have that one call triggered. Otherwise, it's going to increase it in every single index. So this should be intended to be within the if condition. And now we run code, accepted and submit. And it is accepted as well. So runtime and space time for our runtime, we're going to be looping through the entire grid. So it would be n by n. And for space, although we are modifying the entire grid in place, we're not using any extra space in that sense. We do have a call stack. So suppose the entire grid is full of ones. You saw how we had to wait each time to finish the next DFS call before we can get back to our current one if another call was made. So if the entire grid is filled with ones, we'd have to wait until the very last one would be filled and popped off before we can then pop back up to our first index that called it. So in our stack, we would be storing n by n. So memory would also be n by n. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.